You are watching TFI. Greetings! So the TFI Discord server's come up trumps already with someone putting in this suggestion for a video and it's a damn good one mate and if you want to join in the TFI Discord server and chat with people who are interested in this kind of stuff link is in the description down below the Discord server is available for anyone who subs up to my Patreon service and uh, it's totally optional but you can put in suggestions for videos like this one mate so I'm going to turn me off for a second so this, uh, this idea was creating assembly patterns at non-uniform or irregular spacing. So at the moment with the assembly pattern tool, say for example a rectangular pattern, you can pick what you want to pattern and then you can pick an edge or a, an existing origin axis and then you can tell it how many items you want and then the spacing between all of those items and you get a pattern of assembly pieces at uniform spaces. That's fine. Hunky dory. But what we can also do is create non-uniform spacings. But it's a bit of a funky workflow. So this is not really anything new. It's just quite it's one of these things that's difficult to know it's there unless someone points it out to you. So there's a number of different ways of doing this and getting to the same end result. This is just one of the ways. I can't go over every way or it'll take forever, mate. But this is one way. So what you need to do is create a dummy or a reference part with a predefined sketch pattern in it with the direction and the spacing of where you want the assembly pattern pieces to be. So it can go create. We can call this, this is going to be a dummy part, so you can call it a dummy part if you want. Just call it something like party. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want it to be, as long as you know what it is. And make sure you set this to reference as well, so it doesn't appear in your bill of materials or your parts list, because that would be non bueno. Click OK, and then you can drop this. This can, Again, this can be anywhere. It doesn't matter where the reference plane is, because you can then create the, the, the actual sketch in the right place later on. But I'm going to drop it on the bottom of the piece. And then we're now editing that dummy part in the context of that part. So we're still working in the assembly, but we're editing that dummy part. So I can click new sketch, and this is where it needs to be in the right place. So I'm going to drop this sketch on the bottom face of the part, because I want the pattern to start exactly in the middle of this assembly piece. It doesn't necessarily have to be. If you want to start patterning this item over here and go one, two, three, four, one, you can create your sketch up there but as it goes, I want it to be here. The next thing I need to do is sketch out the pattern and the direction of it. This can be a straight line, it can be an arc, it can be a spline, it can be whatever you want it to be, but I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna draw a straight line and say, let's make this, I don't know, two meters, for example. And then the next thing we're gonna do is create, where, we're gonna predefine the points where we want to pattern the assembly. So we can select point, start here, that's gonna be the first patterned entity, and let's just let's just keep this simple and we're going to just drop down maybe a handful of points along that line make sure it's actually snapping to the line and then we'll drop the last one at the end there right click and okay and then to make sure that you've got these in the right place i mean we can use these for the actual patterned points but they haven't got any dimensions on them so that's kind of the point of this it's having predefined spacing so you can put your dimensions on so we can say 250 between uh, the first two entities and then you can have maybe 500 and then i don't know whatever just th this is entirely up to your uh, your requirements but we'll just put 500 on that one and then for the last one this is going to be predefined at 350 because it's constrained to the end point so they're irregular spaced click finish sketch and then the next thing we need to do is we're going to drop a work point so we're going to go to the work features point drop a work point on the first sketch point there and then you want to go to a sketch driven pattern pick your work point, and then it'll automatically pick up those points and drop them on all of those sketch points like that. Click OK, and you've got this sketch-driven pattern. So these are predefined work, these are, these are work features dropped on those uh, dimension sketch points. Go back up to your assembly, and then we're ready to, to create the pattern. This is where things are a little bit strange, and it took me a while to figure this out, and I thought at the end of it, what the hell is that about? But it, it works. So we're gonna select pattern. This is an assembly pattern. Pick the item. And then you want to go feature pattern select, select that red arrow, and this is the bit that's a bit funky. You've got to select the modeling panel and then pick sketch driven pattern. And then look at that, mate. There you go. Click OK, and you've got your sketch driven pattern. And that's now associative back to the original dummy part. So if you do go back into here and then edit this sketch driven pattern, the original sketch itself, and then change any of these entities, so we can drop this down to say 250, it'll update 
the uh, the assembly when you jump back into it. So that straight line that could be that could have been a spline. So the points that are placed on that straight line that could have been on a curved spline. You could have created a three D sketch and weaved it up in the air and across, and they would have patterned across uh, the the spline. It's up to you, mate. It's up to you. But that's the foundation of it. That's how you create uh, a non regular uh, assembly pattern across a series of points in an assembly. So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks very much uh, for the suggestion in the Discord server. Again, this is where I'm taking suggestions and ideas for videos. Now, they're not all been made into videos. It depends how useful they are across a wider audience, but um, there are some good, uh, good, good ideas being thrown out there. So thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.